some space here. Ball in! Do we have our first goal? I think we do. And if you miss the introduction to Haley Mace coming into the match, I bet you don't miss her now. Let's take a good look at this, shall we? Well, let me remind you, Haley Mace came to North Carolina and wanted to be made into a U.S. Women's National Team defender. Paul Riley said, no way. You were better up the pitch in the attacking third. And she picks out the perfect ball, driven into that near post. Goes Bella off of her line. And you get Dabinia glancing in right at the perfect moment to tap that one in. Rain looks out wide. Header in the box from her in. Has she tied it up? Oh, yes, the Portland Thorns get a little life, a little love as we are tied at one. Haran might have gotten the ball there to begin with, but <laughs> Simone Charlie off the bench into the back of the net to finish the play. And Portland wanted to be able to sustain attacks. So with this one, they switched to that far flank, and that's where the service comes in. Lindsay Haran again gets on the end of it with her head. Can't connect on the first one. LeBay gets the help of the crossbar, but can't cover up the rebound. And Simone Charlie's there for the put away. Mewis, a touch to get free into attacking territory across and a goal! North Carolina and Lynn Williams finally come through, giving the courage the advantage late. Helps develop them at a young age. Well won by Lavelle, and now slips it ahead. Hatch sneaking through. Excellent save. Turned aside by Nair, and the follow-up put in. Washington Spirit grabbed the opening goal. On to the second half here. Washington and Chicago, 1-0. To the Spirit in the 46th. After the, in the first 10 by Rose Lavelle. How about this opportunity? How about a goal right at the outset in the second half? And Ashley Hatch, the BYU alum, steps up for the spirit. Well, we thought the first half was a dream start for the Washington spirit. How about this second half? Fantastic run. You see Ashley Hatch realizing Alyssa Nair taking a little bit of a too calm of a touch here. Just pounces on it. Makes the most of it. Fires in the back. There's the touch. Can't get it out from underneath her. Ashley Hatch continues her run. Just makes the most of it. You can see how it... And they've gotten this far before. And they make something more of it. What? St. George. Di Bernardo. That does slip through. And Gaucho. With a new name on her back. Pulling Chicago one closer. The former Morgan Bryan. Grab Chicago's first goal of the tournament. Just like that, though, we see Chicago pouncing on Washington Spirit. It's just deflection and this run through Morgan. Bowen. Here comes Ratcliffe racing off the touchline and now charging in, sends it out in front. It's chipped away and comes to Hansen. That overruns all the way to ball. Slid through again. A-Rod on side. Rodriguez drives. Ball in front is in. How about this return for Diana Matheson? Utah Royals FC lead. And this is a phenomenal goal by Utah. 
It starts with the Labonta. She picks up time and space to get her head up, and that is a brilliant ball in, threaded perfectly. Amy Rodriguez gets on the back shoulder of the center back, beats her players with her speed, and then Diana Matheson with a perfectly timed run. All she has to do is redirect that one. She gets in front of it. The two defenders, there's miscommunication. Such little details separating each team. Yeah. It's important that you get that type of competition. Three added minutes. No stoppage. This just gets over Jan's daughter. Here comes Latsko. Latsko squares. Daly is there. Daly scores. Houston levels it in stoppage time. And after all the work that Utah has put in in this first half, they'll be disappointed with this one. But this is always where Houston Dash can beat Utah. Great run by Veronica Latsko to find that space on the outside of the center backs. Good ball across with Rachel Daly. It's a tough touch here at first, but gets enough of it. Christy Mewis, the former third overall pick by Vlako Anonofsky in Kansas City. Drives for Houston, header snapped in! Rachel Daly's got a brace. Dash ahead, 2-1. Then Mewis and Rachel Daly linking up for the set piece, this corner kick. Rachel Daly just fearless, beats everybody to this ball, rises above. And coming into this game, Mike, we've talked about her being a fearless leader, not afraid uh, to Excellent engine. And her ability to make little runs to get in behind and unbalanced defenses. Stangle, Grove! There's Houston's third. What a strike. Groom in, a player that can help Daly run at back lines, help create chances. Good work by Stangle. We talked about her link play, being able to draw other players in. Perfectly timed run. She's wide open. No one comes close to be able to mark her, shutting her down. But she stalls her run, hits this one perfectly first time. Lori, there is such a thing as too close to goal, but for Vero, I'm not sure that applies. Not in this regard. I've seen her score some <laughs> of those brilliant free kicks. Around the wall, over the wall. How do you challenge Campbell here? Farrell delivers and scores! Magnificent! Batheson wants that ball back. Game on! Just as we were saying, Mike, Farrell with a brilliant free kick. Goes far post on this one. Enough pace on it. Doesn't have to get it up and over the wall. There's that gap right there. She slips it in between Nairn and Alicia Chapman. Perfectly placed. Jane Campbell does a good job of getting over there, guessing right. But there's enough pace on it. She's unable to keep that one out of the back of the... 206 international caps. Maimon comes on for Jan's daughter as well. All subs are in. Cross launched in front. Hit it in. Goal, Utah. What a professional debut for the first round pick. 3-3. Three, three. And another beautiful ball in. And it's losing marks on set pieces that have been the difference maker in these games in the opening round. Kaiser cannot stay with King. And she does a fantastic job just to control her body, be able just to knock this one down away from Jane Campbell. Back where it came from across the box. And the courage will continue. It's through the challenge of Staub that Williams continues. The recovery run is late. Williams scores for the courage. Remarkable run, Lynn Williams, second of the Challenge Cup.
The energy levels in this altitude, it's remarkable. Crystal Dunn, Addison Merrick. Off the turn, Dabinia. Dabinia floats, stabbed in! North Carolina up two goals to nil, and she's done it again. Lynn Williams, three goals in the tournament, a brace today. And Dabinia with the good touch. No one closes Dabinia down. Easy cross. And then Tori Huster loses when Lynn Williams has done so well positionally to deny her any real clear chances on that left-hand side. But here, Lynn Williams beats her to the ball. All she has to do is get a tap in. Good little no-look flick. Played in the middle. Vero. Now for Rodriguez. Rodriguez scores! Another picture-perfect run for A-Rod. Royals FC lead. And Craig Harrington wanted Amy Rodriguez and Brittany Ratcliffe to get on the ball much more in this first half than he saw in that first game. And they've done that. Ratcliffe and Rodriguez combined beat the Sky Blue players on that flank and then in wide open Vera that's where you want your number 10 in those pockets of space and she just threads a beautiful ball into the path of Amy Rodriguez who times her run perfectly and then just slots that one low the only place that Sheridan wouldn't be able to get to that far post helped out the whole team with this goal and the celebration it's not all about her where's she pointing two sons and and her husband out in the stands <laughs> enjoying the game here Inside the bubble, Ryan, Luke, husband, Adam. And then off to the, the <laughs> playground. This has gotten so much pub on Twitter. Off the short corner. And it's lobbed off the crossbar and in. Ersig finds the goal for North Carolina, the breakthrough. This entire game. And then she gets rewarded on the attacking end. They end up going for the short corner. Just a recycled runs. The late run is too slow for Chicago to get out and press. Klingenberg. Take the set piece for Portland. Excellent ball. Diving header is in. Lindsay Horan believes. Takeoff, Portland lead. And what a finish by Lindsay Horan. We talked in the first half how this, the delivery has to be better from Klingenberg. This time she whips it in with a bit more pace. And then we've seen Lindsay Horan do this so many times before diving header making the difference for her team putting her body on the line to get a any sort of touch on that ball Bledsoe does good to at least try to get a touch on it but can't keep it at quality in the air so they will be the targets along with Sullivan short corner flick down on the back heel header is in Washington equalized The spirit. Pull on the level terms in the 77th. Looked like Nielsen, the center back, the beneficiary of that back heel flick on. And just as we were saying, even though Collins isn't in the game, they drive this one near post. And this is a fantastic little flick from Sanchez to keep this ball alive. And then Nielsen times her header perfectly to get up and over and puts this ball right back where it came from in the upper 90, exactly the only place where B Bixby wasn't.
for what it's worth. Marissa Pilla spoke Christy Mewis. An interview that aired earlier today on CBS All Access at halftime. Ball to Mewis. Mewis a chance! Christy Mewis! How's that for transition? Dash lead. And these are not the same old dash. This is great pressure from Shea Groom. Forces a quick turnover. A bad pass out of the back from Casey Murphy. And then it's Shea Groom that finishes this one as well. Initiates that pressure. And it's a little black back heel to the onrushing Chrissy Mewitt. Oh, well done. Good touch by Sophie Schmidt to get herself out of that pressure. Daly, rising header, gorgeous goal, Shea Groom. Two of the best goals in the tournament belong to Groom. 2-0 Houston. And you can see what this goal means to this Houston Dash team. And it's that touch from Schmidt that keeps her out of pressure. She finds Daly so much room out wide and that delivery but no one picks her up and these were the question marks coming in the two center backs how that partnership would work out between brooks and barnes too easy especially after the game that shea groom has had so far uh, three back for utah but they have been exceptional in terms of blocking shots yes they've given away space out wide that's causes them some issues throughout these three games but when it comes to recovery runs and fight, those players have been phenomenal in terms of not allowing to get easy shots off. And that's not an easy formation to play, especially when you're asking to cover that much ground. Momiki for Balser, it's in! First goal for O.L. Reign of the tournament could be a stoppage time game winner! The catalyst for O.L. Reign, their rookie of the year in 2019. And just as I was saying, the job that the Utah players and their center backs have done, Balser finds a little gap in between them. Another fantastic ball that's just right over that back line, perfectly placed onto Balser's head. And she does it, finishes this one perfectly. All she has to do is redirect. Barnhart's caught on her line, can't come out to save that. But credit to Balser, just finding that little gap, that deep run out of that number 10 position. On Manu. Able to slip the ball through now. Is this the opening goal in this tournament for Sky Blue? Finally on the board. Monahan, the second round pick a year ago, put Sky Blue ahead. And this is an incredibly, incredibly important goal for Sky Blue. No goal so far in this tournament. You can see what it means to them as a team. Christy Mewis does a good job here with her recovery run, but then it's the poke. Actually, it's Anamana who's able to feed that ball through. I thought it was off of Christy Mewis, but a great delivery right there at the end to slip Monahan through. And then Jane Campbell just comes out, can't get it, a hand on it, but that's a great touch by Mon Monahan to be able to separate herself and just get her hips around it to slot that one home. Fantastic build-up play. An even better start from this team that so far has struggled a bit in this tournament to get themselves going, to get any sort of tempo in this first couple of games. As the NWSL Challenge Cup rolls on, Zions Bank Stadium in Utah. Eight teams all competing for seeding through four prelim preliminary round games. First games of the year in 2020 for all these teams. Wait, is the goalkeeper out? Is Campbell beat? She is! Kawasumi! Sky blue up by two! And we haven't called Kawasumi's name much in this first half but this is a brilliant goal just awareness to realize that Jane Campbell's off her line comes out to try to scoop that one up lands perfectly to Kawasumi and then just ships this one over but this again goes to the fact that Houston Dash try to press they lose the ball and then it's Cujo who starts this play tries to play it over the top forces Jane Campbell to come up 
Rolled all the way out. Kumi, chance here for Hatch. And now lays it on. Shot, goal! Washington grabs the opener in this one in the 16th minute. And this is great build-up play. We've seen Kumi pinch inside. We've seen him at her out wide. Threads this ball right into Ashley Hatch that occupies. Settles, short. Ball is in! Chicago grabs the lead. Casey Short. And does that keep them out of a quarterfinal matchup with North Carolina? Well, Mike, we've been saying it all game about experienced players stepping up, helping their team, and Casey Short has really come alive in this second half, getting herself into the attack. And at first it looked like this ball was just floated up there, which it was, but Casey Short does makes this. She gets up, times it well, and then it's just that little generation of power that gets this one past Abby Smith. This isn't easy to deal with in terms of a ball floated up that doesn't have a power initially. She has to make something of it, and she does. Now Dahl Kipper will set up for the corner. Towards the six, headed down. That shot finds the left corner, and Sam Mewis puts North Carolina on their board. The first first half goal for the North Carolina Courage. If you leave players unmarked or lose your marks in and around the six, off of these set pieces, they'll make you pay. And we see Imani Dorsey just allowing Sam Mewis, pops off Sabrina Flores and Imani Dorsey. Way too easy for North Carolina to be able to put this one on. There's no quit. You talk about the work rate here of North Carolina. Lynn Williams charging forward. Plays it to Dunn. Dunn with an opportunity, and she puts it in the right corner. And Crystal Dunn has her first goal here in the NWSL Challenge Cup. Too slow for players to shift. You see Lynn Williams here doing a good job picking up this ball. We've seen this almost identical play from her. This time decides to play it into the path of Crystal Dunn. Lewandowski bites, doesn't get a good look. 